Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2023 Toyota Corolla. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed and it is an exposed cross tube meaning you can see uh, pretty much the whole portion of the hitch except for the mounting part but honestly it sits pretty far recessed back with the receiver tube opening protruding so you get a nice clean look overall and with this rear uh, kind of fascia design here it does hide it pretty well now looking closer at the hitch this is going to be an inch and a quarter because it's a class one so you are going to be a li little bit limited when it comes to cargo carriers or bike racks or even ball mounts but i personally have one of these on my vehicle and it's nice to have that there that way if i need to get my bike rack on i still can now any accessory is going to stay in place with a half inch pin and clip now the hitch does not come with one a lot of times your accessories will come with one um, so that's kind of an added benefit when you're looking at hitches to see if they have one uh, included. But if you want to pick up a locking version, we have those available here at eTrailer. It's really nice to be able to leave your accessories in place and locked in. That way no one can just walk by and grab your accessories. And we do have a rolled style safety chain loop here. So if you plan on pulling a small trailer, you can put the safety hooks on there pretty easily with a standard S hook or even a larger clevis style is going to go on there very easy. Now, as far as weight capacities, it is a class one. So you are going to be limited to a 2000 pound gross trailer weight rating. Uh, and that's going to be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up. So this can definitely do something like a, a maybe a small sea -Doo or a wave run or something along those lines, kayak tra trailer. But really, you don't want to go too large on this. A small utility trailer may push it. Just make sure you're adhering to that weight number. Now, there's also a tongue weight rating of 200 pounds. And that's going to be the downward pressure that's put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So when it comes to bike racks, you're probably going to want to stick with a two bike at most and make sure that uh, your bikes aren't too heavy and going over that 200 pounds same with a cargo carrier just make sure you're weighing everything out you don't want to put too much stress on this now if you do plan on pulling a trailer you also want to check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's capable of towing uh, and then compare that with the number of uh, that the hitch has as far as its rating and also any of the components that you're going to be putting in here and take the lowest of those numbers that way you're not overloading it and you stay safe few quick measurements from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia. We're looking right at about three inches and that's going to be important for some of your folding accessories like your cargo carrier bike racks to determine if you can fold those. Uh, with this you should be fine. Uh, you're not going to make contact with your fascia. Now as far as ground clearance goes it's obviously a pretty low car already and our ground clearance is coming in right at about nine and a half to ten inches roughly about there so that's going to be uh, pretty low to the ground so when you have your accessories loaded up there are going to be extended past the vehicle so as you go up an incline they're going to want to tilt towards the ground so definitely try to drive on just normal flat pavement if you go up an incline definitely keep that in mind or any rocky or rough terrains maybe even speed bumps it's going to get pretty close so when choosing accessories you might look at one that has a raised shank now, if you are planning on pulling that trailer, this is also the measure, measurement that you're going to use to get a ball mount to determine if you need a rise or a drop. So you can measure your trailer level at the coupler and compare that with the uh, measurement here on our hitch, and then you can pick up your rise or drop. Now, as far as installation goes, this one isn't too terrible, but there are quite a few little steps that you're going to have to do, including dropping the muffler, trimming a heat shield, and if yours has an underbody panel, these kind of get a little bit tricky. I've done that on a previous Corolla. This one did not have one, so it made it quite a bit easier. And as far as getting your hardware in place, you are going to be drilling a hole in the frame rail to create the mounting spot to pass your hardware through. So make sure you have safety glasses and a good way to drill that hole in the frame but I'm gonna walk you through every step that way you can get your hitch installed to begin our installation we're gonna go ahead and strap up uh, our exhaust because we are gonna be lowering it down to give us a little bit of extra clearance so we want to support that we'll be popping off the isolators so you don't want that exhaust just hanging down um, so if you're doing this in your garage uh, or in your driveway you're gonna to want to use something a block of wood or even a box will work just enough to kind of make sure it's not hanging by itself since we're on a lift I'll be using a cam buckle strap just using our suspension arms here, this will create a nice little cradle. Now there's three isolators we're gonna take a look at and pop off. We have one that's here, one that's on the back side of the muffler, and then also one that's kind of uh, by the rear cross member there. Now, if you're having trouble getting these pried off, you can use a little bit of a spray lubricant uh, or even a soapy water solution. Um, but if a long flathead 
or a pry bar like we have here should allow us to get this pried off. You can kind of utilize the hanger as leverage and that should just pop off like that. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing for our rear one that's back here and then also this one. And with our muffler drop down, that's going to give us access to the three 10 millimeter nuts that are holding up our heat shield. So we're going to go ahead and take those off and that way we can remove the heat shield. We will need to do some trimming on this. Now we do need to trim out our heat shield and this is going to be right where our frame is and uh, this is where our access holes for bolting up the hitch are going to go. So we do need to trim this out. I've taped it up. Uh, the measurements are in the instruction manual and sometimes they're not exactly precise so you may have to trim more but this should get us pretty close. Now as far as cutting this, uh, it can get pretty sharp so be careful here. Uh, you can use a pair of shears, you can use a Dremel. Um, really any cutting device that you may have, angle grinder, uh, just kind of get this cut out. And then what I do is on those sharp edges, I kind of just roll that back to make it a little bit smoother. That way you're not getting cut during the process. Now, depending on your trim, uh, you may or may not have a plastic underbody panel here. If that's the case, you do need to remove that. And there's going to be instructions on how to trim that out um, in the instruction manual. Ours does not, so we're going to continue on. Uh, now, on each side of the frame rail, we have this rubber plug. Now, there's two up here. Don't worry about those. This is going to be the one where we pass our hardware through. Uh, so you can normally get these with your fingernail. If not, you can use a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver to pop that out. Um, and it, we're also going to need to take this caulk that's here from the factory. We need to scrape this out to make sure that it's nice and flush for our hitch to sit up there. You can use a putty knife, um, a utility knife if you're careful. I use a multi-tool that just kind of uh, cuts this off nice and even, but go ahead and do that on both sides. Now at this point, you're going to want an extra set of hands here, and we're going to raise our hitch up in position. Now our goal is to align this rear hole. Um, so this is where one of our hardware points is going to pass through, so make sure that's aligned. And then on the back side, we actually need to mark out where we're going to be drilling for our new hole. So with a paint marker, I'm just going to go ahead and make a mark there and do that on both sides. Now with our hole marked out where we're going to be drilling, uh, we do need to go ahead and enlarge that large enough to get our carriage bolt head through as well as our spacer block. And these are right at about an inch. So you got a few different options of how to make this hole. Uh, you can do a, a pilot hole with a larger bit and then grind it out. This will take probably a little bit time. Um, you can also use a step bit to enlarge it. Uh, my preferred method that's a little bit quicker is going to be, I have a one and an eighth inch hole saw and this should make a nice hole for us. So go ahead, I'm gonna drill my pilot hole and get this hole made. So with our hole made, we'll just test fit to make sure our spacer blocks are able to fit through there. And I'm just gonna go back with a quick file to get any burrs knocked down. And then since we have raw metal here, we want to make sure that doesn't turn to rust long term. So if water gets trapped in there, um, that can start to create surface rust. So to protect that, we're going to go ahead and just take a little bit of spray paint. And you can use a paint marker as well. But just go ahead and coat that raw metal, and that's just going to help protect it long term. Now we're just going to go ahead and repeat on the other side with drilling out our hole. Now at this point, you can go ahead and grab your fish wires, your spacer blocks and carriage bolts because we're gonna to start to put our hardware up that's gonna create the mounting point uh, for our hitch. So starting off with the factory hole that was there, we're gonna take our fish wire and feed this back. Uh, take that coiled portion once you get it to the access hole that we drilled out. And uh, I'm gonna put a little bend on this tail so it doesn't pull through. It's also gonna help when we put the hitch up, um, but pretty easy. We'll take our spacer block you can feed that over and just somewhere in the frame rail is perfect. And then we'll take our carriage bolt and thread that on. And then you can feed that as well. And so from here, you just kind of jostle that along and leave the fish wire on. We need this for when we raise the hitch up uh, because if you bump this up into the frame rail, you're gonna have trouble getting it out. So we'll leave these on. And then we're gonna do a reverse fish wire technique here um, to gain a mounting point on this portion. So pretty easy, take the coiled end and just kind of feed the spacer block on and hold that in place while you coil your carriage bolt on. And then feed both of them up there. And then 
we can pull this down. So we'll go ahead and repeat on the other side as well. And before we get our hitch raised up in position, we can go ahead with our heat shield that's trimmed and feed this into place. Now we did lose a mounting point uh, when we trimmed it. So go ahead, get this fed onto those studs. That was a good time to also check. We should have the clearance here uh, for our hitch. Um, so we'll go ahead, get these tightened back down. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna be raising our hitch in position. You're gonna to have to slide it over the muffler and take your uh, fish wires and feed them through the corresponding holes. Now you're also gonna to wanna to have your serrated flange nuts ready to go because we're gonna to try to get at least one of them hand started on each side to hold the hitch up, to make it a little bit easier to get our hardware in place. So just gonna feed this up. And what you can do is you can pull the fish wire off. Now be very careful to not push this back in the frame rail. So you can use the hitch as leverage or your finger, or even a screwdriver, just to kind of make sure that you're not pushing up as you thread this on. And just kind of get a few threads started. And that's gonna help us get the other ones uh, started as well. So with our hitch being supported by those two that we started, we can go ahead and get our other serrated flange nuts in place. So with our hardware started on both sides, we can go ahead and snug this down. We're gonna be coming back with a torque wrench to make sure that it's properly torqued, but just to kind of draw these up a little bit, I'll be using an 11 16th socket. So go ahead and get these snug down. Now we're coming back with our torque wrench and the torque settings are gonna be found in the instruction manuals. Uh, you should be able to get away using a 3 8 drive uh, torque wrench, but if you need a torque wrench, we have them here available at e-trailer. Generally, you can go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. This is gonna make sure that it's gonna be tight enough uh, to be on for the lifespan of the hitch, but also not too tight putting stress on those bolts. So go through and torque these all down. So our hitch is officially installed. We need to get our muffler put back on. So uh, you may need to kind of raise this back up by hand and get your isolators pop back in. With our exhaust back up, all that's left to do is take whatever you had supporting your exhaust out of the way, load up your accessories and start using your hitch. And that was a look at installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver on a 2023 Toyota Corolla.